Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following Election Day in America closely. We have more on the big races to watch and what it could mean for next year's presidential election. Also, a major drug bust in Massachusetts, including fentanyl shaped like Valentine's Day candy, and our exclusive look at how federal officials at the southern border are now trying to stop the flow of the drug. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. A lot more ahead on GMSA, including an update on traffic as we take a live look at 90 and couples. We're back after this. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio firefighters are working to figure out what sparked a blaze that destroyed a house on the city's west side. Our Katrina Weber is standing by live with the latest from the scene. Plus, it's Election Day. We'll look at what's on the ballot this year and how you can get some help getting to the polls. And let's look out there with a live cam. It's a little humid out there, even though we're down to 63 degrees. But uh, we'll take that cooler weather because it is going to warm up later this afternoon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, November 7th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday and in the afternoon got a little warm out there. Stand by though. Cold, big cold front is on the way, but in the meantime, we're dealing with temperatures a little bit closer to normal, Mike, in the mornings. No, not this morning. We're way above that. Okay. We are uh, 10, 15 degrees above normal, and then we're going to be five almost 10 degrees above normal later on today. So if you thought it was warm yesterday, even warmer, still warm. Then we're going to be looking at the other side of normal once this front moves on through here on Thursday. For the uh, short term, though, we're keeping an eye out for some fog. Now, there's nothing showing up in this picture. You can see a few clouds uh, off in the distance there. New Braunfels has now dropped to four miles visibility. Pretty good at Pleasant and Port S.A. Both have gone back up to 10 miles. And then Gonzales has also dropped off as well. Further on down to the southeast, Beeville, Corpus Christi, Victoria, a lot of fog there. So once again, it's starting to sort of creep to the northwest a bit more. We'll have to keep an eye out for New Braunfels because think back the past couple of days where it's been kind of getting a little thicker and then all of a sudden it just visibility drops like a rock in certain spots. That happened around Hondo yesterday after yesterday morning. Pardon me. So again, we watch out for that dense fog advisory. Just our extreme southeastern counties this morning. But obviously, you got to watch it elsewhere. We do have temperatures that are, like I said, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Should be in the low 50s right now. And the allergens, speaking of low, both mold and ragweed are on the low side. Temperatures this morning won't be moving all that much. And then we'll have more sunshine than yesterday. Still some of those clouds hanging around here, but that's going to allow us to get up to 80 already at noon and then top off at 84 later on this afternoon. And... Tomorrow, just about as warm, although a few more clouds around here. Then we have transition day on Thursday, and it's looking like it's going to be one of those upside down kind of days. Warm in the morning, cooler in the afternoon. We'll talk about that and the rain chances and see if it's going to be a washout this weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big going on? Well, things took a turn over here, Mike. Now that we have entered 6 a.m., let's get a look out there at Transguide 410 at uh, 281. Pardon me, at Loop 410. We have a shot that shows you multiple lanes are blocked there and uh, flashing lights. Not a good situation, folks. We do have a major crash that has now been reported by TxDOT, and we do know at least three lanes are blocked, and it is causing some slowdowns for drivers that are heading out there in the, this early in the morning. Please be on the lookout. Watch for those first responders. Let's get you to our map and show you what's uh, taking place out there because what we're seeing is that buildup is taking place in the eastbound lanes as you approach 281. Uh, so again, watch out. Three lanes are blocked. Not clear how many vehicles may be involved or if there are any injuries. I'm going to keep a close eye on that, but not the only issue that's popped up this morning. Now at I-35 southbound at Splashtown Drive, we do have another crash reported. No indication of slowdowns, at least from our map, but I'm going to step out of here in a moment and talk to our friends at Transguide. The wider view does show things are still pretty quiet, but really this is the hour where things also shift out on the roadways. We're all familiar with that. So again, we're going to keep a close eye on these situations throughout the morning. 281 at 410. I'll send a push alert out, so make sure you have that KSAT mobile app downloaded with those notifications turned on. I'll come back with an update in the next few minutes. Top story this morning, arson investigators are looking into the possibility that someone set fire to a vacant home overnight. The home on Torreon Street burned to the ground. Our Katrina Weber is live in that neighborhood, not far from Guadalupe and South Roswell Street. Katrina, what makes them suspicious? Think this much. Well, for starters, they say they have stories from neighbors about people going in and out of what was supposed to be a vacant home 
possibly living there without permission. The arson investigators did spend time going through the rubble, looking for their own evidence. But that was only after firefighters had done their job knocking down the flames that also threatened at least one other home in the 600 block of Torreon. They got the call about the fire after one this morning. While neighbors say someone had been staying there, firefighters did not find anyone inside when they were there. They were worried, though, that the fire would spread to the home next door, which is occupied, but they were able to put it out. Now, the homes on this street are very close together, and so that was a big concern for firefighters. But again, they stopped the fire from spreading beyond that vacant home. And again, no word yet on how this fire started. We also have a word that no one was hurt. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Today is Election Day. We'll be voting on 14 state constitutional amendments. So here are some of the notable ones. Proposition 4 is geared towards homeowners. It would temporarily limit appraisal values for non-homestead properties. It would also increase the homestead exemption on school district taxes, which could save a homeowner around $1,200. Next, there is Proposition 9. That's for retired teachers. It would increase the cost of living adjustments for retired teachers, something that hasn't been done in almost 20 years. The increases would be from 2 to 6%. And looking at Proposition 14, the amendment would send a billion dollars towards improving state parks. According to the Texas Parks and Wildlife, this would be the largest investment in parks in our state's history. For a full breakdown and polling location, scan the QR code on your screen now. You can also look at the rest of the amendments that you will see on the ballot. And if you need a ride to the polls via can help, you can get a free bus ride if you show the bus driver a valid voter registration card. This is part of VIA's longstanding Ride VIA to Vote program. Now today, voters can visit any Bear County polling site to vote. Polls are open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. And since launching the program in 2016, VIA has provided more than 2,000 trips for voters. You can look for a list of polling sites right now on our website at kset.com. Six children are in the care of Child Protective Services this morning while their parents face charges for alleged child abuse. Both Amanda Mann and Dustin Lawrence are charged with three counts related to child endangerment and four counts of child abandonment. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says their investigation started when Mann brought one of the children to a hospital over the weekend with severe burns, then left. The one-year-old baby also tested positive for methamphetamines. The sheriff's office says the couple lived in an RV along New Sulphur Springs Road in the southeast part of the county. That is where investigators say they found the they found two-month-old twins, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old living in what the sheriff calls filthy conditions. A woman who says she is Amanda Mann's sister told KSAT she reported the family to the state child abuse hotline several times. Brought them back and they said that. They're just going to make them go to a parenting drug class so they could keep the babies because they don't want to take the babies away from their parents. Child Protective Services would not confirm whether it had any prior interaction or cases involving this family. And looking ahead, Jacob Brownson is finally going to trial later today. He is accused of shooting and killing three men inside their Northside apartment as his wife and three kids waited outside in a van. Brownson has actually been sitting in the Bear County Jail for a while, and at one point in 2018, he and two others were able to escape but were quickly recaptured. Testimony begins later this morning. If he is found guilty, he would automatically be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Also happening today, the Supreme Court hearing a closely watched case over gun rights and what's covered by the Second Amendment. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, the main issue is whether some people accused of domestic violence should be barred from owning a gun. This morning, victims of domestic violence are watching the Supreme Court closely. Justices are taking up a challenge to a federal law that bans Americans who are under domestic abuse restraining orders from owning a gun. I have three in my head. Um, I have one in uh, my right side and one in my left side. Lashea Cretain was shot repeatedly by the abusive father of her daughter. I said I couldn't be with anybody else but him. And he showed it by hitting me. She believes the law would have protected her had a restraining order been in place, but police told her there was little they could do. He shot me behind my head and 
in each hip, and I felt right next to my daughter. Every year, judges issue thousands of domestic violence restraining orders, limiting contact between an aggressor and victim, and blocking some 77,000 gun purchases through the federal background check system. We know that it's not just intimate partners murdering their, their partners. We know that they're doing it with firearms and that these laws are preventing them from doing that. But the Supreme Court has a decision to make after a lower court ruled the law violates the Second Amendment. This statute actually ends up disarming a bunch of law-abiding or, or otherwise good people. Judges often issue mutual restraining orders, which disarms both the victim and the abuser at the same time. Domestic violence survivors like Lashea argue keeping the law on the books is a matter of life and death. People that are a danger to themselves or to someone else they need to not have the access to a deadly weapon because guns make situations more fatal, makes abuse more fatal. Hundreds of gun safety and domestic violence prevention advocates are expected to rally at the Supreme Court today. Gun rights advocates say they'll be there too as oral arguments begin. Derek Dennis, ABC News. 610, 63 degrees. Here's a preview of what's coming up next on GMSA. But I sometimes liken more to a kindness movement than it is an organization. After the break, you're not going to want to miss this woman's message about kindness and the capacity for kids to change the world. As we take a look outside with live cam, I want to tell you we've spotted a big accident right now. 281 410 area, a lot of flashing lights, some backups. Traffic is moving in that area, but we'll check in with Stephen a little bit later in the newscast. Welcome back at 614. So it is a season of giving and you're never too young to learn to care for others. Yeah, in fact, science has proven that kids as young as three are able to show empathy and compassion towards others. That's why one organization is helping children, even toddlers, learn the importance of volunteering. As Alexa Lorenzo reports, they are planting the seeds of caring at an early age and spreading an important message about kindness. I'm making a, ra a rainbow with the sun. We hope we helped it be kind. They're young, but already learning a valuable lesson. When you volunteer, it kind of like, it just helps out other people. To us, kind is cool means that we can never underestimate the power of a simple act of kindness. That's the message Brandy Jimchura is trying to instill in children. We're missing a huge opportunity here as a community to not engage our youngest generation. That was the initial seed that sprouted the nonprofit Seeds of Caring. Let's figure out how we can do that and let's figure out how we can partner with nonprofits to make sure that, you know, we are mobilizing kids to meet their needs. Starting in Ohio with 285 children, eight years later, there are 26,000 kids who participate. Seeds of Caring gives out 10,000 sack lunches every year to shelters and food pantries. Thank you. Yep. Patrick and his sister Aggie Barrington have been volunteering at the homeless shelter for five years. We see people that are struggling just to even find a meal. We need to help out the community, make it a better place. Seeds of Caring spearheads 50 other projects, totaling more than $100,000 of material donations each year. A three-year-old can do more than we would think they can. It has single-handedly changed the trajectory of who they are as humans. Our overarching goal at Seeds of Caring is to raise our next generation of kindness creators, bridge builders, empathizers, and change makers. Kind is cool. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. 616, 63 degrees. And big problems on Highway 281. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, and you may have received that push alert to your KSAD mobile app, so just be careful out there. Let's just take that shot in and show you what's happening out at our roadways. This is actually 410 going eastbound, closer to 281, specifically right around right around Jones Maltzberger. And Mike was just mentioning that looks pretty familiar out there. So we have three lanes that are blocked at this time and several flashing lights. Heavy first responder presence out there, but right now it is not clear how many vehicles may be involved 
or if there are any injuries. But you can see this is causing a delay for drivers in the area, and several of those folks are having to slow down and pretty much come to a stop. I want to get you to our map, and that orange buildup is taking place again right around 410 eastbound, as you see it on our map, close to 281. But really specifically, uh, right there, we have it at Wetmore Road. So we'll watch it closely and hope for a better update soon. But we take a look down over here at I-35 southbound near Splashtown Drive. Another crash also reported. We're not seeing this on the Transguide cameras, but I'm going to have to keep a close eye on that on our map. The wider view shows things are thankfully still pretty quiet for the most part. If you're heading into town, let's just get a quick look at those travel times. 22 minutes along I-10 eastbound from Bernie, 24 along 281 southbound if you are heading in from Bolverde, and a 25-minute drive time for anyone heading down I-35 southbound from New Braunfels. But you will see some slowdowns here on Transguide cameras as we take one last look there at uh, 281 at 410. This is just a shot from Transguide, but remember this is 410 going eastbound close to Jones Maltzberger, so be on the lookout there as first responders are working to clear the scene. What a mess. Yeah, yeah, I know. It really That's is. Rough. Jeez. That's All rough. Right. As you uh, hit the bus or get on the bus, I should say, this morning, don't need a jacket. It's 64 degrees, very warm. We are averaging, you know, 10, 15 degrees above normal, and then high temperatures are going to be about 10 above normal. Partly cloudy skies and enough humidity to sort of feel it. I had to cut a little bit of grass yesterday. No. Yes, I actually had to cut a little <laughs> bit of grass yesterday. That's good. It wasn't bad in the afternoon as far as the humidity was concerned. Great looking picture here. We, you know, we were talking about how the sunset yesterday with some of those clouds just created some gorgeous scenes. And here's another shot right there from Leon Springs. That is sensational. Thank you very much for that picture. Lots of clouds, couple little breaks here and there. There were lots of clear skies earlier this morning when I was coming into work. By the way, this is just past that incident right there looking eastbound on 410. So everything is backed up way back beyond where this uh, camera is pointing. All right, as far as fog, a little bit around New Braunfels. Gonzales down to a mile and a quarter, so it's starting to creep a little bit further inland. Quarter mile at Beeville, half mile at Corpus Christi, so you go down 37, you're going to run into some of that. Heading out 10, you may run into a little bit of that fog as well, so we're just going to have to keep an eye on this. Of course, the dense fog advisory in our extreme southeastern counties this morning. Mid-60s on average all around the area, and these numbers, dew points, measure more in the atmosphere and again that's the threshold right there that 60 degree mark where it gets above that you start to notice it a bit more so we've got 65 for a dew point up there in canyon lake 62 out at the airport yesterday we did hit 81 degrees a lot of 80s on the map and today add a few notches to that so we're going to be at 84 here in town Pretty much the average temperature, low to mid 80s all around the metropolitan area. So dew points are rather high up in the mid 60s. Front comes through Thursday. Yes, that is going to bring in some cooler air, but and I keep comparing to the front we had a couple of weeks ago when it got really cold. We had those clear skies and that bone dry air, which really allowed the, allowed the low temperatures to drop down. Humidity is going to be staying up somewhat this weekend, so that's going to do a couple of things. That's helping out with some of the clouds, but also you can't drop down below what the dew point temperature is. So therefore, low temperatures won't get that cold. We'll be in the 50s, but then with the clouds, high temperatures aren't going to be moving all that much. So pretty much uh, maybe five degrees between the low and the high from Friday all the way through the weekend, plus those rain chances. Also, notice how all these clouds are coming in here from the southwest. So what we're going to have is the front that moves on through here, but the flow coming in from the southwest. And so that's what's going to uh, keep a lot of clouds around here. We're now starting to see another freezing temperature, a couple of them up there to the north. So this cold air will push down to the south. But like I said, it's not quite the the punch that the uh, the last front had. Thursday, we start off just like this morning and yesterday and everything, but we'll have those showers developing. And this is right around the time when the front starts to work its way through here and all this moisture, which is coming in from the southwest, kind of overrunning. And there will be some pockets of some heavier rain, parts of uh, the hill country. And it's going to be late Thursday night. And then especially down to the southeast, we're going to have to watch out for some potentially heavy downpours. And there's the, the chance when it's all said and done between Friday, Thursday night, early Friday, and then again starting off next week. Could see anywhere three, four, five inches of rain, especially down to the southeast. 84 today, 82 tomorrow. Kind of the same situation we've had the past couple of days. We start off very warm on Thursday. Then the front moves through, and temperatures are going to be dropping down throughout the day on Thursday. Rain chances pick up. 
and cool through the weekend for Veterans Day. 62 degrees and just a little bit of sunshine out there. Not great rain chances. Thank you, Mike. 622, 63 degrees. We'll be right back. RSV can severely affect the lungs and lower airways. But I'm protected with Orexv. Orexv is a vaccine used to prevent lower respiratory disease from RSV in people 60 years and older. RSV can be serious for those over 60, including those with asthma, diabetes, COPD, and certain other conditions. But I'm protected. Orexv is proven to be over 82% effective in preventing lower respiratory disease from RSV and over 94% effective in those with these health conditions. Orexv does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients. Those with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects are injection site pain, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, and joint pain. I chose Orexv. RSV, make it Orexv. We are spreading the word about shoe and sock donations for the San Antonio Police Department Share the Shoes campaign. From now through December 12th, you can donate a pair of new shoes or socks to any of the seven SAPD substations. Every donation will be given to a child in need of new shoes through Zapatos. Last year's donations boosted their supply significantly, but the need is always there. They're looking for shoe and socks size 9 toddler to 5 adult. Another request is for shoes for wider feet. So if you'd like to donate for this great cause, you could do so through December 12th. Again, at any SAPD substation. We have all this information on KSAT.com if you want some more information. Look at that beard grow. <laughs> That's right. The guys at KSAT are showing off their beards this month in hopes of raising money for No Shave November. Uh, you can see that QR code on your screen. And we have a leaderboard this morning. All right. So one of our photographers, Adam Barraza, still leads the way. Adam Barraza with $250. Our very own Stephen Cavazos at $225. And Mark is right there with a $100 donation. Finally on the Yay. board. But you know what? Uh, yeah, you're going to move up. I know you are. And then Mike's right there with a $25 donation and Max Massey 25 as well. And you always got to watch Mike and Max because it seems like every year they come out of nowhere and just wham, big, yeah. win the whole thing. Yeah, they're sneaky. And I'm, I personally, I'm waiting for payday to uh, make my donation. So oh. it's coming up soon. Well, thanks in advance, Steph. Yes, you're welcome. 626, 63 degrees. <laughs> Let's look out there with a trans guy looking over at the situation over there at Highway 281 at Loop 410. Still a mess. We're going to be checking back with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Right now, GMSA, today's the last day in the third special session up in Austin. Why state lawmakers are not on the same page and how that's keeping some bills from reaching Governor Abbott's desk. Plus, our beloved San Antonio Spurs have lost two games straight after getting demolished last night on the road. We're going to look at what happened as they try to rebound before tomorrow. Sun is on the way up right now. Quite a few clouds over San Antonio this morning. Some humidity down to around 63 degrees as we wake up on your Tuesday morning. That's right. It's a nice Tuesday morning. It is November 7th. Thanks for joining us today. Let's get right to Mike Goes Trade. You get your Tuesday forecast as you head out the door for work or school. You kept saying it was a little on the warm side yesterday. It's going to be even warmer today. Wow. Yeah, and we're starting <laughs> off very, very warm, you know, 10, 15 degrees above normal. Yeah, a lot of clouds here in town. Other areas have have just partly cloudy skies. The clouds kind of help out by holding what heat there is in, and that helps to prevent some of the fog from forming. 65 at uh, at the airport right now, 2.62. So relative to this temperature, there's a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity out there, and we don't have any wind to deal with. So we're not seeing any fog here in town. But now look at that. New Braunfels was down to four miles back up to 10. However, Gonzales is starting to see some uh, fairly thick fog and then further on down to the southeast is where the thickest fog is. This still, even though say New Braunfels has come up with visibility, we could still see some of this fog developing over the next couple of hours, especially say east of I-35. So just be on the lookout for that. Dense fog advisory southeastern counties up until 10 o'clock this morning. 
Everybody is well above normal upper 50s hill country and then mid 60s here and we do have light amount of mold as well as ragweed. Updated counts going to come out in about an hour or so and throughout the rest of today, partly cloudy, low to mid 80s. It's going to be the situation tomorrow as well, but I will have a few more clouds hanging around here tomorrow. Then we get into Thursday. Same start as every other morning this week, including this morning. Front comes through early afternoon. We are going to see temperatures drop down, so looks like it's going to be one of those upside down days. Upper 60s, 70 in the morning, and then upper 50s in the afternoon. Also, we'll have some rain that will continue to develop, especially overnight into Friday morning. Rain tapers off then. Timing right now looks fantastic for football on Friday night. No rain, but it is going to be chilly, that kind of damp, chilly and cloudy. That'll be the situation on Saturday as well. There could be a stray shower down in the southeast on Saturday. However, rain chances will tend to go up Sunday into Monday, and it is going to be staying chilly. So even though you don't need a jacket right now, make sure you know where it is when that front moves through Thursday. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, still got that huge problem out there? Better news, Mike. Oh. We have that crash has already cleared actually within the last few moments. As we take a look outside at 281 at Loop 410, things look normal. This is a shot that we are used to seeing if you were heading out maybe toward the airport. But remember that crash was reported along 410 eastbound not too far from Jones Maltzberger has to, it, again it just cleared it within the last few moments so that's the good news that we are reporting we are still seeing a little bit of a delay out there in the eastbound lanes along us to are closer to 81 pardon me no major delays though aside from that we're going to keep a close eye on that but i expect that will be improving momentarily now the wider look at the map shows a different story though us 90 eastbound we're going to see a little bit more of that congestion that tends to build around this time but thankfully no other major issues are being reported at least at this hour we're going to keep a close eye on things we're not too far away from morning rush but but again, better news here at 281 at Loop 410. This is a shot that we're used to seeing. Just expect a few more vehicles out there as the morning commute does get moving. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. A fire in a vacant home made for some tense moments for neighbors. Firefighters had to scramble to keep the flames from spreading. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Torreon Street, not far from Guadalupe and South Brazos. Katrina, was anyone hurt? No, there were no injuries and the neighbor's home is okay. Now, firefighters say although they had reports that someone may have been living in that vacant home illegally, they didn't find anyone there when they got there. Now, they say that the fire burned the vacant home in the 600 block of Torreon to the ground. Firefighters got the call about it after one this morning. When they got here, they say their big concern was keeping the fire from spreading. The homes on the street are especially close together. Neighbors told firefighters they have seen people going in and out of that vacant home, possibly living there without permission. Arson investigators are looking into the possibility that maybe some of those people had something to do with the starting of this fire. They spent some time going through the home here looking for evidence, but they did not say exactly what the cause of it was. And just looking down that street now, it looks like there is some smoke that is rising up again. So we're going to take a look and see if maybe the fire department may have to come back out here. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, the Texas legislature will close the book on its third special session, but there is a good chance lawmakers will be called back to Austin, and that's because they have yet to reach a deal on some of the governor's agenda items, including school choice. Now, Governor Abbott appeared to double down last night on his demand to pass a school voucher-like program. His post on X, formerly known as Twitter, says, quote, school choice means a brighter future for every child across Texas. Now, together, we will deliver school choice for Texas families, end quote. Now, whether that will happen today remain, remains to be seen. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick will not be in the Texas Senate tomorrow as he continues to recover from an illness. In a statement released on Monday, his campaign said part and quote, the members of the Texas Senate are fully prepared to address any issues the governor may include in a fourth special session. Uh, Patrick and House Speaker Dade Phelan have traded jabs over the past few years, all over the lack of agreed upon legislation for school choice and border security. Phelan released a statement Sunday that says, in part, quote, we did our part, and when the fourth called special session convenes, we will do so again. The House and Senate did reach an agreement on one of the governor's special session agenda items, COVID-19 mandates. At last check, the governor has not yet signed the bill. And a reminder on this election day, we have everything you need to know before you head to the polls this morning on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story on our homepage.
Meanwhile, the Uvalde CISD Board of Trustees has named Ashley Chloe's as the lone superintendent finalist. Now, Chloe brings 28 years of education experience and is currently serving as superintendent of Poth ISD. In a statement, she thanked the Board of Trustees and the community, community and expressed excitement for the work ahead of her. Wimby and the Spurs played their first set of back-to-back -back games this season, and it didn't go well. Late first quarter at Indiana, Pacers guard Buddy Heald hits a three-pointer with one-tenth of a second left, and the Pacers led 44-28 after one. Second quarter, here's something we shouldn't see very much this year. Wimby gets a shot blocked by Isaiah Jackson. Pacers push the ball back the other way where Heald goes three, and Indy goes up 47-28. They led by as many as 27 in the first half. It was 86-61 at the half. Second half, just about the same. Third quarter, Wimby makes a three-pointer, drawing the Spurs within 21 points, but that was as close as they would get in the second half. Victor scored 13 points and had 10 rebounds in 21 minutes. He sat out the entire fourth quarter, as did Zach Collins and Keldon Johnson. The Pacers led by as many as 44, and they hammer our Spurs to final 152-111. Indiana outshot SA from downtown 20-8. So looking ahead, Spurs will try to regroup and bounce back tomorrow night, 6.30, Madison Square Garden against the New York Knicks. And before we go to break, the Canyon High School Marching Band Funnel Cake booth has been a staple at Worst Fest for longer than alumni can remember. Bringing delicious funnel cakes to the community while benefiting local high school students, now providing over $75,000 in revenue. The booth is one of the largest fundraisers of the year for the program. So this opportunity keeps fees low for the parents when it comes to uniforms and travel expenses. And it's all thanks to the students and parents who volunteered during the 10 day run. It offsets the cost uh, significantly. So obviously the largest one that the band has. So it's a really good part. And yeah, the kids love doing it. The last day of Worst Fest is this Sunday. So if you are craving something sweet, swing by one of the two booths found throughout the grounds there and with every purchase know that you will be supporting local families and musicians just about 640 63 degrees and just ahead we are looking at pet disease that's affecting our community what a san antonio vet is saying about chagas and how to spot it in your pet just about 643 an important reminder this morning for pet owners and chagas disease it is a potentially life-threatening illness caused by Parasites. Although Chagas is more commonly associated with humans, it can also affect our beloved pets. KSAT producer MJ Inoch sat down with a San Antonio vet to discuss the symptoms, the testing, and treatment. It's probably one of the most serious diseases that we have here. Number two, it's everywhere. And nobody is immune. Dr. Roy Madigan is not only a medical director, but the principal scientist for the canine Chagas treatment study at Lackland Air Force Base. He says even people that spray their yards and get their pets groomed can still be affected. And he says most of the cases he sees are asymptomatic, but there are signs to look out for. When we look for disease, when we have Chagas disease in dogs, we always do further testing because we need to assess things. And the majority of dogs, you know, 95% of dogs, we can find something wrong. And it's usually in the form of an arrhythmia, which is an abnormal heartbeat, laying around, sleeping more, weakness, certainly things like collapse, coughing, you know, anything you know, breathing wise, that those are going to be some, some ideas for you. He stresses that while humans can't get Chagas from their pet, those nearby bugs can buy anything. He says nearly 300,000 people in the U.S. are infected and many don't know it. If your dog tests positive, um, you as a human being need to get tested. And early detection is key. And while testing could take almost seven days for results, labs are currently working to release a test next year that vets can run in-house and get results in 15 minutes. The treatment, while it's 100% effective, the duration is is fairly long, okay? It's a one year treatment, okay? And yes, it does get tedious. I've got three of my own dogs, my entire pack has Chagas disease. And guess what happens in December? We're done, we're done with treatment. So, um, and yes, it's like prison one day at a time, right? So we're excited, but it, it we do know that at 12 months, uh, every dog gets better. The majority of dogs, 99% you know, of them, we're gonna be able to help them out and give them a good life again. And Dr. Madigan encourages owners to pressure their vet to run those tests and to always keep in contact. MJ Inoch, KSAT 12 News. 
for a full breakdown of what the kissing bugs look like, plus a more in-depth view into treatment and testing, head to ksat.com there. You'll find a link to watch uh, to his website with tons of information. You'll also find data between testing and percentage of infection. And time now, 645. And from this angle, the roads are getting a little busier. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. It's that time, guys. It is 645, so we get a look outside and see a bit more activity. 37 at Fair Avenue, we give you that wide view on your TV screen there where you can see traffic coming right at you at 410 at Blanco. We did have a pretty serious crash along 281, but it's what's happening here along 410 that is slowing folks down. Let's get you to our map because we do have a new crash reported at 410 eastbound right there at Bandera Road. Behind me, a little bit of that Orange and yellow is starting to build as you just saw on that trans guide camera. Slowdowns are taking place. I'm going to keep a close eye on it, but make sure you watch out as well. US 90, don't forget that installation work will continue later this morning. It's going to slow you down there, so be on the lookout between 9 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon. We'll see alternating ramp closures from 36th Street to Couples Road. But remember, this takes us to the end of the work week, so just plan your commute ahead of time. Always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures. But as we get one last look outside, again, roads aren't too bad, but I'm going to keep a close eye on that crash that's been reported along 410. Other than that, it uh, looks like the usual slowdowns there at Tenet Proban. All right, thanks. Yep. Got some that. clouds hanging around here this morning. We're going to have a lot more sunshine later on today. The clouds yesterday, I uh, kept talking about how they just made for spectacular pictures. And boy, this one, definitely wow factor over there at Woodlawn Lake. Oh, it's so beautiful. And then, of course, the reflection of it. Thank you very much, Ms. McClellan, for that. All right, sun is going to be coming up in about uh, five, ten minutes or so. Obviously, we do have a fair amount of clouds here in town, but that's helping to kind of keep us from getting too much in the way of fog. The fog's pretty much confined well down to the southeast. Gonzales has now dropped to uh, half-mile visibility. New Braunfels, you had some fog. You were flirting with some earlier. Now it's back up to ten miles, but you just got to be on the lookout again for at least the next hour, a couple of hours. Temperatures will make it up through the 70s this morning and up to 80 at noon. We're going to have more sunshine than what we had the past couple of uh, days, so that's going to help to get us up into the mid 80s later on today. So we're going to be 10 degrees basically above normal across the board. Now, as far as the humidity, which it's there, it's not like it's middle of summer sort of humidity, but that's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. This is when the front moves through on Thursday, and yes, the humidity drops off, and I keep referring to the last front that moved through a couple of weeks ago when, boy, these numbers dropped like a rock, and we had dew points down in the 20s and 30s. It's not the situation this time around, so we're going to keep the humidity around here. And with temperatures only in the upper 50s, 60, it's going to be sort of that, that dampish cool that we'll have Friday and going into the weekend. Here's what's going on. The dividing line, jet stream, if you will, right here along the northern tier of the United States and the central to northern portion of it. That's the dividing line between the cooler air and the warmer air. That's going to slowly kind of sag down to the south and will still be warm tomorrow. Then we start off warm Thursday. The front, the surface front moves through here, but upstairs in the atmosphere, we still have this flow coming in here from the southwest. That's why we keep a lot of clouds around here. And also notice how those little uh, wind lines are going pretty quickly there. That's going to keep the energy around to keep rain around, especially late Thursday night into early Friday. Things will sort of taper off a little bit and notice how the, the cooler air sort of settled in around here. We still keep that southwesterly flow, so we still keep a lot of clouds around here. And that's going to be the situation into the uh, latter portion of the weekend. We get another disturbance moving through here, and that's going to give us another chance for some rain. Looks like Sunday into Monday slight milding of temperatures, then it appears as though another front's going to be moving through late next week. Today, however, 84, 82 tomorrow, more clouds tomorrow. Then front moves through early to mid afternoon on Thursday, obviously sooner in the hill country. Temperatures will drop uh, throughout the afternoon, so we'll start off very mild and then get down in the upper 50s by right around dinner time Thursday. Rain starts to pick up, especially overnight into Friday. Then that tapers off. Timing looks good for football on Friday night, and if you are planning to head to Worst Fest this weekend, I would pick Saturday. Saturday. That'll so probably be the better day. So I'm going Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. good. Saturday. Perfect yes. weather day for you. Because we'll have a few more. It's still early on Sunday better, but we'll have those rain chances around Sunday. But do bundle up because it's going to be that sort of damp chill. I was just picking a day based on the forecast right yeah. then and there. <laughs> Hadn't officially decided until now, you know. now. All right, we'll bring us funnel cakes, please. Okay. Sounds good. And bratwurst. And bratwurst. And potato cakes.
Let's start a and, <laughs> and some of the apple strudel. Wow. All of, all of the above. Just all of the above. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 650, 650, 650, Mark. 63 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. <laughs> I'm Sarah Costa and we are in Poteet. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we introduce you to the family behind Sotex Farms as they plant strawberries for the season and the importance of those strawberries to this community. Let's look out there with a live cam, 63 degrees, not too bad. Eh, you probably don't need a jacket this morning and it will warm up, so be aware of that. We'll be right back. In this morning's GMA First Look, Yoga Retreat Mystery. The FBI is now involved in the urgent search for a missing California woman. Her family is speaking to GMA overnight, saying they want her back home. Please help us bring Nancy home. They've now hired a private search team to comb the area from the water to the sky. We searched 90-95% of the lake. Uh, that's with helicopters, drones, boat crews. Searchers say the terrain, coupled with a lack of information, has complicated search efforts and that witnesses have not been forthcoming. Now her family pleading for someone to come forward with information. There are people that witnessed what happened um, within the group that have not come forward. And we'll have much more on this urgent investigation coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 654, 63 degrees. And some of the shots on Trans Guy look really pretty right now, but let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Roads look pretty as well. In some spots, you know, we're going to see a little bit more of that congestion around this time. Morning rush has started. Guys, let's get one last look out there for you at 410 at Ingram North. The crash that I mentioned earlier looks like it's already cleared, but you notice that there was some congestion in the background. So 410 eastbound, don't worry about the crash because Texas has cleared that, but just be sure to slow down. There are some folks that are experiencing some delays, but we give it you one last shot here outside. Again, morning rush has started. No need to rush outside though, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And we do have plenty of clouds here in town right now. And visibility is pretty good throughout much of the area. But notice that you go out uh, east and 10 toward Gonzales, half mile visibility, Beeville, quarter mile. So just watch it for some fog to try to form up. Mid 60s right now, very mild, 84 high temperature, 10 above normal, very mild again tomorrow. Front moves through Thursday, temperatures drop throughout the day. It's going to be sort of that damp chill through the weekend. Best rain chances late Thursday, early Friday morning and then another decent chance of rain late Sunday and then going into Monday and notice how the temperatures I mean we're going to see maybe what five degrees between the low and the high once we get into Friday as well as the weekends so like I said it's going to be sort of that damp chill but rain is going to be as of right now ending in time for Friday night football and perfect for the quarry Saturday night. And we will be there welcoming the big guy. Yes, we're excited about that Saturday evening, but you guys have a good day for us.